Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, my name is Anthony Anaxaguru. I'm a poet, a writer, teacher. I'm going to be um, giving you some instructions today on how you create imagery <clears throat> within poetry. So, um, obviously, poetry is uh, a way of, of using language, a way of using words. Um, <clears throat> and I think the idea with a lot of poetry is that we we show we don't tell so there's a poet called um, Douglas Dunn <clears throat> and what he says is that you should write in pictures and think in sounds so I always use this when I think about ways in which we can kind of write poetry and how we can tell stories so one of the kind of common <clears throat> not mistakes but one of the common uh, errors that people make well it's just another word for mistake really but one of the common things that people do in poetry that we try and well we i say we me and maybe other poets as well they try to kind of like encourage them not to do is to be very literal with what they're saying so there's always this idea that we want to be understood we want to be um, <clears throat> comprehended in some way so i have a pen in my hand where if i talk about the pen i describe the pen i'm going to use it as a pen a utensil <clears throat> that i use for writing and that's when things become very literal, they become very direct, they become very obvious. So the idea with a lot of poems is that we use images, we use things, pens, phones, computers, um, to mean something else. So the idea is that they show the relationship between objects. That's what we want to try and do. So how does this pen relate to this book? Is there an association between the two? Um, so when we think about writing poetry, we often think about how we can bring images and bring material things into a poem. So what I want us to try and do over the next um, half an hour <clears throat> is to have a go at trying to write a poem, but just using images to tell that story. <clears throat> so for instance, you want to write a poem about what day is it today? Saturday. So you want to write a poem about Saturday. Um, how would you do that? So a good way to go about it is to make a list of all the things that you associate with Saturday. So for instance, I mean, you can do that now. So if you've got pens and paper there to come up with 10 things that you associate with a Saturday, um, one of those things might be relaxation. One of those things might be the park. One of those things might be television. Once you've got 10 things, <clears throat> the next thing you want to try and do is have, so say for instance, in fact, I'm going to do it as well. Let me get a piece of paper. So yeah, I'm going to have pencil, because I do writing, uh, television, what else is there? Um, cup. Um, shower. <clears throat> uh, park. Coffee. Um, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, green. Somehow the color green. Maybe that's the park thing. Um, Relaxation, I'm going to have relax. And I have one more uh, phone. And then work, because I do a lot of work on the weekends. But I do a lot of work every day, but that's a different story. Um, so we have 10 things, right? That's how my 10 look. They look like that. So once you've got your 10, to draw a little line down the middle, like this. And then what you want to try and do is create an association. So for instance, pencil, what do you associate with a pencil? Um, I associate art, I associate pictures, um, lists. But for the sake of this, um, I'm going to write fragility. So fragile. I don't know why. I mean, I do know why, if I had to really think about it, but the pencil for me 
is a very fragile thing. Maybe if you press too hard, it breaks, but also the line is quite faint. Um, you can rub things out with a pencil. So it's, all, it's got this kind of like, yeah, it's got this delicacy to it. So I'm going to have fragility. Uh, so fragile rather than fragility. I'm going to make it into um, an adjective. Right? So fragile for television. What do I associate with television? Um, noise. Can't watch television. It makes me anxious. There's too much going on. Cup. Um, what do I associate with cup? Tea. Tea cup. Shower. Um, I do a lot of thinking in the shower. Sometimes I spend too long in there. So the thinking shower, that's good. Park, um, again, uh, space, coffee, um, alert, green, mm, don't know, I have to come back to that one. Let me just work with these ones now, because this is what I've got. So you can pause this and come up with your list whilst you're doing this. Um, so once you have your things like that, pencil, fragile, television, noise, flip it the other way around. So now you've got noisy TV, uh, fragile, pencil, um, spacious park. All right? When you've got that, what you want to try and do at that point is to give it a verb. So try and come up with a doing word. So noisy TV doing what? Noisy TV sitting. Uh, fragile pencil ruminating. Kind of like deep thinking. Spacious park whispering. All right, so give it an ing, like a doing word, ing at the end. Um, so you have something like that. Uh, your teacher could pause this at this point, so you get to do, the, to do the exercise and try and do it for all 10. So you want to try and do it for all of the, the 10 words that you've got going on. Once you've, once you've got that for all 10, then what happens is you want to try and somehow start making a poem out of these things. Now, you've got some images, right? So you've got noisy TV sitting. That's an image. But what you can also do, if you can see what I, I don't know if this might be upside down. But you can also muddle things up. So you don't have to keep to this order. So you can have noisy pencil sitting spacious tv whispering you can create different combinations of words depending on what makes an interesting thought and what makes an interesting image something to bear in mind when you're thinking about poetry and this idea of nonsense which sometimes people say to me oh i don't know what this means or oh, it's just a nonsense doesn't make any sense usually the reason why they're thinking that is because of logic so the logic says, I am sitting on a chair. A chair is designed to be sat on. The logic says, I'm going to go for a walk with my trainers on. All right? That's all the note. If you start to play around and you create impossible constructions, i.e. I'm going to go for a walk um, with my bicycle, or I'm going to ride the wind in a box, what does that mean? I mean, there's a actually, that's where I got this from. I confess. Wind in a Box by Terence Hayes, right? It's a collection of poetry. But what does that mean, wind in a box, right? So you can ask yourself these kinds of questions and you'll find some answer. But the idea is that it's an impression. And it, a lot of it is how you relate and associate with that idea and with the image. So noisy TV sitting what comes to mind when you think of that? That's actually quite straightforward. There's other ones that can be made more difficult, um, more complicated.
But that's what you want to try and be doing. You want to be asking yourself what these thoughts make. Now, don't worry too much about making sense. It's more just the impression that the reader can get from the poem. In fact, what's interesting is the less sense you make, the more space there is for the reader to get involved in what it is that you're doing, which is really interesting with poems. Um, I mean, I write stuff and I get emails from people sometimes and how they interpreted the poem was kind of different to what I was trying to do, but somehow it still managed to work and, and correspond. So they can go either way. So, okay, so you've got your, you've got your constructions, right? You've got your bits. The trick now is how do you organize these things to make a poem? How do you create them so that they're all kind of responding and talking to each other? So the title of your poem is gonna be Saturday, all right? That's the title. And you're gonna use as many of these images as you can to try and create some kind of, some kind of poem. Now, what you wanna do is you want it to kind of like begin at a place. It doesn't necessarily have to be the beginning, but it has to be somewhere. So you can't just come in with noisy TV sitting, fragile pencil ruminating, which is what people have done in the past when we've, um, when I've done these workshops, they just list the whole bag of, they just basically list the list. Um, but that's not what we want to do. We want it to try to be a little bit more inventive with the way in which we do stuff so what's going on on the saturday what's happened maybe start it at a kind of an event something has just happened something is about to happen then what happens after that um that's like a nice way of of doing it so i'm at the tv or you're at the tv you're at the table someone's just walked in the cat has just ran off outside the garden and you're going to chase the cat but here's the thing the cat isn't really the cat the cat it represents something else so you think symbolically what could a cat represent in a poem obviously it's your pet we know that but the cat could also mean luck a cat could also be companionship um, there's loads of different ways you can think about a cat in a poem depending on things going on around it right so have a think about your symbols how they work the relationship with the other words around and try and kind of put a piece of writing together um, I'm going to try and do something really quickly for the sake of showing you what I mean with the words that I have so um, I'm going to go up in the spacious park. In the spacious park. Three dogs. Let's go with three. Three dogs run across the playground. Then what happens? Three dogs run across a playground. An owner, the logic will say an owner, so an owner will chase them, but on this instance, we're going to do something. We're going to be a bit more surprising. So rather than an owner chasing them, an owner will whistle. Now the whistle implies something happy. An owner will whistle. Now let's jump. Let's do what they call a imaginative leap. Um, the daffodils. Why not? bend into their yellow. That's a nice image. Um, through the shadows, always got to have shadows. Through the shadows, hot. And something else, what else can shadows be? So shadows can be hot. But what else could, what, what could a shadow never be? Hot and, two adjectives. Hot and, we haven't had any adjectives really. Now we've got one. Um, through the shadows, hot and. F 
fragranced. The, through the shadows, hot and fragranced. A curtain, let's throw a curtain in, moves into the next hour. Three dogs, there we go, let's bring the dogs back in. Three dogs return their owner's whistle. So the poems kind of come full circle. The dogs are now whistling back to the owner. Now, there's a lot that can be said around that. That's how it looks. It's quite rough and messy. But I've got whispering in there. No, I haven't. I've got whistle. Well, we can change that. I've got spacious park. Um, and then we ran off. I mean, obviously, like I've gone a little bit off piste here, um, and I should have included more. But that's basically the idea: is that you begin with one of the constructions and work your way down. Obviously, try and include more than what I did in that one, um, and see what you can come up with. But you just want like one thought. Don't kind of like stretch it out to have loads and loads and loads of different things. You want to try and keep it as contained as you can. Once you finish writing the poem so the teacher can pause it now you guys can go and do your writing think about adjectives adjectives a lot of the time in poetry don't really need to be there um, a lot of people say that they compensate they mask for the lack of, of poetic thought they're basically it's decoration. Like you have to see adjectives as kind of like decorative. You've got like a very plain room and you're just throwing loads of stuff everywhere. So try and limit your adjectives um, or try and play around with them in a slightly like different way. The other one is conjunctions. So see how many conjunctions you have. Um, so conjunction or connective is like and, then, but, because like, don't need it. If you have a, con a conjunction or a connective and you want to kind of keep, link the sentences together, use a comma. Um, that's, an, that's a good way to do it. Or you can have like a break between the lines. That's another way of doing it. So yeah, think about these kind of things. And then the last one is think about your line breaks, like where you're breaking the line. So I've, my line breaks are quite small here. Like I've got three, four words in a line that I line break. But if you look where I've done it, everything is on a concrete now. Um, so I've got dogs, yellow, daffodils, owner, park, across. I line break on concrete now, right? Um, as you get older, you become more experienced, more ambitious. You can line break in different places. So sometimes I line break on A. But that's like a stylistic choice that's done deliberately to try and, again, disrupt the pattern of what they call the syntax. So the way that everything is kind of lined up and positioned. Um, so those are the things to think about. You can also do a second draft of this if you wanted to, if there's time um, to go back over it again and, and try and come up with, uh, with, with something else. If you don't manage to use all your words, don't worry about it. Even if, you've, even if you've managed to use three, that's fine. But remember, you can muddle things up. So you don't have to stick to the format that you've got them on the paper. Things can be pushed around and moved and, and whatever else. So that's also very, very possible. Um, editing, I don't know if you're gonna have time to edit, but I would definitely suggest going back over your poem and rewriting it. I usually spend, well, I can spend like up to two weeks sometimes on like one piece of writing. If I work on it every day, I could probably get a poem written in about a week, but then that might change later on down the line. But I get like something solid within the week, and then after that, different things start to happen. So, yeah, see how you feel, see how you go. But um, it's always worth bearing in mind that the poem doesn't really take off until like the third, fourth draft, something like that. So... You can, you can look to do that kind of thing. And then once you finish, once everything has been done, um, read them out, share them, give feedback, um, see what you're doing. Remember, you don't have to conclude. 
So poems don't have to resolve. It doesn't have to have a start, middle and end. You can do different things. You can start, middle and then stop. So there's a poet called um, Matthew Sweeney, who uh, he passed away a few years ago, but he used to say you chop a poem off at the legs, which means that if you think you're finished, if you go back, so for instance with mine, if I was to go back three lines, he would say here is where I'm more interested on this bit here. So that's where you kind of like start deleting stuff or you try and look to see if you can end a different space. Um, yeah, that's kind of it for, for this kind of exercise. And remember like your images are what drives the poem. I can send uh, your teacher at Bradford Literature Festival, I can send them over some examples of poems that um, are very imagistic. So they use imagery to drive. Um, and that imagery is usually very rich, quite complicated, quite unusual. Um, but it's got a lot of subtext, so there's a lot of things going on underneath it. Um, yeah, cool. So I say, once you've finished, read them out, share them, draft again if you want to draft. And yeah, that's it. That's image making. So you mess up the constructions, adjective, noun, verb, um, list them all out, and then play around with how you position those words to see what makes things interesting. Remember, poetry isn't about the words that you're using. It's about the thoughts that the words make. You should be more interested in the thinking rather than using fancy language. It's all about what you're saying. That's the important part. All right, good. Hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed that. You found it beneficial. Um, thanks for doing it. Um, hope it was fun. Have a good day, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Um, and thanks very much. Take care. Goodbye.